Uh, we're going to want to be able to solve radical equations. Those are equations that have roots in them. How we're going to have to do that is um, using just four steps. First of all, get the radical alone. So get that square root or cube root by itself on one side of the equation. Then we've got to get rid of the radical. It seems simple enough, and usually it just involves squaring or cubing, but it can get a little trickier than that. Once the root is gone, it lo looks like an equation just like any other one, so solve it like you normally would. And finally, probably the most important is to check your answer, because in this whole squaring process, when we get rid of the radical, we might introduce um, some what we call extraneous solutions, some extra solutions. So let's try a whole bunch of examples, first of all. Uh, solving square root of x is equal to 4. We have the radical alone, so we're going to want to get rid of it. And how we undo square rooting is by squaring, so square both sides. And we get x is equal to 16. But be sure to check your answers. Seems simple enough here. Is the square root of 16 equal to 4? Yes, it is. So, what we found is our solution. So let's check out this one. Square root of x equals negative 4. Now when we square both sides, we'll once again get the same answer of x is equal to 16. When we go to check it, is the square root of, x of 16 equal to negative 4? No, it's not. And that's the problem. That means that this is not a solution. It's called an extraneous solution. And this equation has no solutions. Uh, square root of x plus 25 equals 4. So go ahead and do the same thing. Get rid of those radicals alone, so get rid of it. We're going to square both sides. x plus 25 is equal to 16. Now we have an equation that we can solve like normal. Subtract 25 from both sides. And x is equal to negative 9. I'm a little leery of this one because I got a negative solution and I don't really like taking square roots of negative numbers. But when we plug it in, and we're asking ourselves, is square root of negative 9 plus 25 equal to 4? Well, that's the square root of 16. And the square root of 16 is equal to 4. So, x equals negative 9 is our solution. Oops. Um, cube root now. What about when we got the cube root of 2x plus 7 plus 2 is equal to 5? Well, like I said, first we have to get that root alone. So I'm going to just get rid of this 2. And then we'll have the cube root of 2x plus 7 is equal to 5. And now we have to get rid of the cube root. We can get rid of that by taking it to the third power. Hold on a second, because this 5 is not a 5. Remember, we did 5 minus 2, so that should be a 3. Anyway, back to it. Um, the cube root and the cubed power, they cancel each other and leave us with 2x plus 7. And 3 to the third power is 27. Now we're left with the equation. It looks like any other equation. So we can go ahead and solve it just like we normally would. x equals 10. Don't think that that's your solution just because you came up with an answer. What we need to do is check it. So we plug it back into the original. Is the cube root of 2 times 10 plus 7 plus 2 equal to 25? Well, 2 times, 7, 2 times 10 plus 7 is 27. And the cube root of 27 is 3. Is 3 plus 2 equal to 5? Yes, it is. That means x plus 10 over here is our solution. In this equation, x to the 3 fourths minus 1 equals 7. It doesn't look like there's a radical in it, but remember, rational exponents are roots. So that's where our root is. We have to get that root alone first. So I'm going to add 1 to both sides. And now, I need to get rid of that rational exponent. How do I do that? Well, with every other example, how we got rid of a square root is by squaring. How we got rid of the third root was by taking it to the third power. So how we're going to get rid of a ra rational, a rational exponent, or how we get rid of a radical, is by using an exponent. And the exponent I'm going to use is 4 thirds. Now, I didn't just pick that out of thin air. It's because I'm going to be taking a power to a power, so I've got to use that power to a power property, which says that when we see a power to a power, we multiply them two powers together. 
And when I multiply these two powers together, I'll get three times four is four, and four times or three times four is twelve, and four times three is twelve. So this thing's gonna turn into twelve over twelve. Which is one. And that's the power um when we have a power of one, we've gotten rid of all radicals. We've got a whole number of power, so we're good to go. Now it's just a matter of finding out what is eight to the four thirds. Well, that's a cube root of eight to the four, which I'm gonna write as eight to the four, because the cube root of eight is much easier to find. That's two. And two to the fourth power is sixteen. Make sure you check it. So take that sixteen and plug it into the original. And is 16 to the 3 fourths power minus 1 equal to 7? And uh, if you don't want to go through doing that by hand again, go ahead and type it into your calculator. 16 to the 3 fourths power, that's 8. Is 8 minus 1, 7? Sure is. And so that means this is our solution. X equals 16. Here, we have uh, radicals on both sides, so maybe you're a little worried, but don't be. We do have the radicals alone, so go ahead and square both sides. On this side, we'll get rid of the radical, 7x minus 9. On this side, we'll get rid of the radical, 5x plus 13. And now well, the radicals are gone, so go ahead and solve it like you normally would. Getting all the x's on one side, adding 9 to both sides, and then getting x alone. But once again, be sure that you check it. Is 7 times 11 minus 9 equal to 5 times 11 plus 13? Well, 7 times 11 is 77. And 5 times 11 is 55. So, we get the square root of 68 equal to the square root of 68. And that totally checks out. So, x, plus 11, x equals 11. Uh, this problem seems simple enough, but it is surprisingly more difficult. We want to go through the same process so we get the radical alone. It's alone. Now get rid of it. Square both sides. When we do that we're left with x squared equal to x plus 6. And we have to remember how do we solve these things. Well that's quadratic. So we have to get it equal to 0 by getting that uh, x and the 6 on the same side and then solving that, we can use quadratic formula, you can complete the square, but this one factors really nicely. Uh, we factor x squared into x and x, and we factor 6 into 3 and 2. We want to make a negative 1, so minus 3 plus 2. Then, each of our solutions are right here. x equals 3, and x equals negative 2. Make sure that you check it. We check the first solution by plugging it in. Is 3 equal to the square root of 3 plus 6? Well, is 3 equal to the square root of 9? Yep, that one checks out. But also check your other solution. Is negative 2 equal to the square root of negative 2 plus 6? Well, is negative 2 equal to the square root of 4? No, square root of 4 is 2, not negative 2. So this is our extraneous solution, and our only real solution is x equals 3. Let's do it again with x plus 1 equals the square root of 7x plus 15. And the same idea holds where we're going to have to square both sides. But be careful. When we square on the left-hand side, that's not x squared plus 1. You have to foil that out, and you'll get x squared plus 2x plus 1. On the right-hand side, though the square root and the square cancel, and you're left with 7x plus 15. Now... Once again, it's still a quadratic, so we've got to bring those two pieces over here by subtracting 7x and subtracting 15. So we've got negative 5x minus 14 equals 0. So go ahead and try and factor it. Well, x squared can't, factors into x and x. 14 factors into 7 and 2, so subtract 7 and 2. That means our two solutions happen here and here at x equals 7 and x equals negative 2. Check them.
First we'll try 7. 7 plus 1 equal to the square root of 7 times 7 plus 15. Well, it's 8 equal to the square root of 49 plus 15. Well, 49 plus 15 is 64, and 8 is the square root of 64. So that one checks out. Check negative 2 now. Negative 2 plus 1 equal to the square root of 7 times negative 2 plus 15. Well, on the left-hand side, we'll get negative 1. And on the right-hand side, we'll get negative 14. It's 14 plus 15. So is negative 1 equal to the square root of 1? No, it's not. So that one's not a solution over here. The our only solution is x equals 7. This is definitely the hardest problem. And we have radicals on each side, but we also have this extra term that is not a radical. Um, this is how I go about solving these problems. You'll have to do one or two of these, but this is definitely the hardest one. So, check it out. We have square roots on both sides, so go ahead and square both sides. And I know you want everything to cancel and life to be sweet and peachy, but that's not what happens. Remember, when we square on the left side, this thing has two terms in it. So we're squaring a binomial, which means we've got to foil it. Now I'm going to go through the foiling process the long way. First of all, on the right-hand side, the square root and the square cancel. So that one is nice and peachy, and we're left with 3 minus x. But back to what's happening on the left. We have to foil that. And the first times the first, that leaves us with x plus 2. The outsides, that gives us a square root of x plus 2. The insides, those two give us another square root of x plus 2. And the last, 1 times 1 is 1. It's a big long equation, but we still haven't gotten rid of both of those square roots. If we start simplifying what's on the left, we're left with x plus 3. That's x plus 2 plus 1. And we also have those two square roots. Right. Now let's get that square root alone before we do it before we can get rid of it. So Subtract this x from both sides. We have 3 plus 2 times the root, x plus 2 is equal to 3. Oops, and hold on a second, because these two are not canceled. Because we have minus x, minus x, those two don't cancel. They look like they do, but they don't. That's minus 2x. Now we got to get rid of this 3. These two cancel, plus 3, minus 3. And these two cancel, plus 3, minus 3. So we're left with the radical. Well, 2 times the radical is equal to negative 2x. Let me scoot this up, make some more room. Um, we don't have the radical alone yet. I still want to divide both sides by 2 to get rid of this. Then we'll have that square root alone. And we'll just be left with negative x. So... Go ahead and square it, both sides. Oops. Square root and the square cancel. x plus 2 is equal to negative x times negative x is x squared. And wouldn't you know, we still got another quadratic. So get the quadratic equal to 0 by subtracting this x and subtracting this 2. So x squared minus x minus 2. And you got a foil it or factor it so x squared factors into x and x 2 factors into 2 and 1 we want minus 2 plus 1 so two solutions being x equals 2 and x equals negative 1 from here and here man that was a lot of work and we're still not done yet because we still need to check it so where do we check our two solutions at all the way back at the beginning so we said that our two solutions are x equals 2 and x equals negative 1. So I'm going to write them up here. x equals 2 and x equals negative 1. And let's go ahead and plug each of them in. First, let's take 2 and plug it in. Square root of 2 plus 2 plus 1 is equal to square root of 3 minus 2. Well, square root of 2 plus 2 is square root of 4 
plus 1 is that equal to square root of 1 is 2 plus 1 equal to the square root of 1 well that gives me 3 is equal to 1 and that doesn't work so that means that oops that x plus 2 is not a solution now let's check it with negative 1 is the square root of negative 1 plus 2 plus 1 equal to the square root of 3 minus negative 1? Well, here we'll have square root of 1 plus 1 equals square root of 3 plus 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2. And over here we'll have the square root of 4. And 2 is the square root of 4. So that means our only solution is x equals negative 1. I know that's the hardest one. And I know that you're going to have to do one or two of them. Don't be afraid. Just give it a try. All right? Go through this whole process. Remember that when it comes to squaring this thing, they don't cancel out. All right? You have to come down here, and you will get this term that still has a square root in it. So you'll have to get that radical alone and square it again.